Hey friends, it's Jess with Virtually Visual, and today I just want to do a quick little tutorial, um, something kind of fun. I made this animation the other day and um, just this silly little project with this kind of corporate Memphis style uh, character. We just show you a little tutorial on it because he was super easy to make. So uh, yeah, if you want to learn how to make kind of this simple, stylized, minimalist character, then keep on watching. If you want to download the model, I'll be giving it away. I have two versions of the character, one that's low res and one that's more higher polygon count. So that'll be linked on my Gumroad shop. So check that out in the description if you're interested in downloading. Okay, so in a fresh scene, I'm going to pull in the figure object just so I have a reference for scale here. Um, first thing I think I'm going to pull in is a cylinder and I'm going to rotate this to be on the x-axis and we kind of want it pretty long because this is going to be the base for our arms. Okay, so let me just make this 8 for the radius and we'll do 200 for the height. Next, we need the bend modifier because we're going to be bending this just at the middle of the um, cylinder. I think this needs to be 90 and then I have to play with the size actually. Okay, let's see. Yep, okay, so that's what I want. So I think we want 180. And we probably want, you can keep length, use this little checkbox or you could have it off. Let's add some more segments to our our actual bending section. So I think we need, let's set our rotation segments to like 30 and then our height segments, maybe 50 for now. And then we're going to put the cylinder in a null. We are going to, let's hit this um, enable axis icon on the null and just drag our axis to kind of the center point. Um, and then uncheck that. And then if we hit R on our keyboard, hold down shift and rotate 90 degrees, we will have that facing the right way. So I think that's pretty good there. We'll just leave that. It's probably slightly off centered, but I will adjust that in a moment. Um, let's now pull in the legs. So I'm actually going to click on our cylinder, hold control and drag to make a copy. And I'm gonna delete the bend. And because we had rotated it before, it should now be straight up. So I'm just gonna, whoops. I'm gonna take the height down a little bit and kind of move this into place. See, we might have to increase the bend here because I'm noticing that the leg is kind of meeting the zero point here on our, our plane. So let's just change this to a point we're happy with. Let's say 85. Let's kind of drag our axis to where we want it now and drag that into position. Let's say around there, and then we can move our leg over. Maybe our cylinder is also too long for the arms. We can just change that by changing the height. So once you have one leg in place, what we're going to do is we're going to bring in the symmetry modifier here. I'm going to put that, actually we're going to put our cylinder inside that, and it should directly reflect that across the um, x-axis. So. That should look good. And this also then gives us a little bit of a better idea of where our arm should be kind of centered. Then what I added was I brought in a sphere and I changed this to hemisphere and that'll only give you half, which is kind of handy. And I made it about the same width as the legs. So it should meet the exact width of where the legs are at. And this looks slightly too big. So I'm gonna do 25.5 for the radius here. That looks good. And I'm going to drag this up. This is going to represent the torso. Then I want to make sure I close the bottom of the sphere. So first I want to hit N B on my keyboard and just so I'm seeing kind of lines and things. And I think I'll give us slightly more segments, maybe 45. And then I'm going to hit C to make it editable. And if we rotate under a little bit so we can see this a little bit better, I'm going to go to the face view, hit this close polygon hole option. Here we go. 
Okay, and then we just close that up. It's way too wide. I mean, if you like that, you can keep that, but I thought it was a little bit too wide for what I wanted. So I just hit T on my keyboard and I only scaled on the Z axis. So I think I went to something like that. And I think I also ended up just scaling upwards here and then dragging the, uh, the little half hemisphere down we need a head for our character so let's bring in just a simple sphere scale that down bring it up then we can move on to the fingers and toes so this is also really really simple uh, I ended up just copying the leg cylinder and moving it over and then just like scaling it down honestly um, and changing the height and I'm going to take down the segments because we have a lot right now. We could probably do 8 and maybe 15. And then I just copied it three more times. And the last finger I rotated to kind of represent the thumb. And then moved that to kind of where I thought would be a good place for it. And then when you're happy with the position of the fingers, if you select all of them, and then if we right click while they're highlighted and hit connect objects and delete, we now have specific fingers selected that we can use another symmetry modifier on. So if we go to symmetry, drag our fingers in there, we will now have them also on the other side. So works out really nice. And then the other thing we can do is we can hold control and make a copy of those fingers. And then I just did this to be easy, but I used the exact same things for the toes. So rotate those 90 degrees, drag those into place. You want those, the bottom of the toes to be lined up with the bottom of the leg cylinder. This looks pretty funny. It looks like we got a hand on there, but toes usually, or at least the feet, are kind of structured to be a little bit more pointed outward like that. So uh, feel free to place them however you would like, but that is kind of just how I went about creating my character's toes. Then again, we can just pull on a symmetry modifier, drag that in, and we have our model ready to be put into a volume builder. Really all you have to do, drag in a volume builder, volume mesher, and a remesh. Um, let's just drag the volume mesher in, or the volume builder into the mesher, and we'll change the voxel size to one for our volume builder. And then we can just we'll close all of these. Let's rename them to over here. And one thing that I think is just good practice is making a copy. So just in case we mess anything up, we could drag all of these items into a new null and make that disabled so we're not seeing it. But after that, then it's just time to drag all of these things into our volume builder. And you can already see it's smoothed a lot of things out. So if you don't like how that looks, if you think it's too smooth or you're getting some webbed fingers and toes, you can change the voxel size down even further. Let's try 0.5. And another thing you can do, if we hold down on SDF smooth, we can do SDF dilate and erode, and instead of positive 5, we can go maybe negative a little bit. Find the right balance so we're not getting webbed fingers. So 0.5 and 0.5 might be the way to go there. And then we can do a little SDF smooth. And you could even play around with placing the smooth before the dilate and erode. And then when we put our volume builder in a remesh, let's take the adaptiveness down and maybe change the poly mesh density to 10%. Uh, we want this pretty low because it's going to be really high mesh density as you can see um, before. And as you can see, our mesh density is now much less intense. Um, Let's see, maybe we even want to take it up a little bit more because I think it's better to start with a slightly too high poly mesh than um, one that's too low poly and then you can't go back. So let's try 35%. So I think that's a good number. And we can even check on uh, symmetric X so that we make sure that it's the same on both X sides. Um, that'll just set us up for success. That's really the basis of how you create this kind of wide minimalist, Memphis, corporate Memphis character. You could bring this into Mixamo. 
and you know have him do a little dance and rig it and then play with the white painting back here in Cinema 4D or you can just take the model like I did and throw it into a soft body simulation but yeah that's really the basis of how I made this guy um, hopefully you guys learn just how easy it is to make a fun little character like this I think the volume builder is super fun to kind of play around with so yeah I hope you enjoyed um, again my model will be linked below free to download from my gumroad Hope you guys have tons of fun and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. See ya.